Hi. For most of us, the tea journey begins with something like this. A tea bag, often unlabeled, uh, unremarkable. Buy them from mainly supermarkets. Uh, often they contain the very poorest quality tea. But it is tea, and it's the way many of us uh, stay our tea journey. But uh, uh, anyone who's a regular viewer will know my feeling on these things, and uh, I just uh, can't abide them. So let's make the assumption you move to loose leaf tea. Now, a good analogy is people moving from cask wine to a bottled wine. So you, you know cask wine is it's vaguely what it's supposed to be, but God knows what's in it. Anything that was left over, bung it in. Whereas you go to a bottle, you expect it to be somewhat different. And you do have these varieties. And so when you go to your local shop, you can buy something like this. Uh, this is a loose leaf tea. We'll just have a bit of a look at it. This is a Darjeeling tea, so it's bought as Darjeeling, and that's as far as you go. And early on in your tea journey, you might try this and think, I like this, or I don't. Uh, but it's part of the journey, so I've always liked Darjeeling tea. I'm just going to actually steep some here. What I'm also going to do is steep these other uh, teas I have here. Excuse me for a moment, this kettle's rather really heavy. So I've actually got five different teas here. And the reason for this is that my journey has uh, gone further. Because in the same way that you might start with um, cask wine and then go to a bottle of red wine, uh, you eventually start to say, well, okay, maybe I like Shiraz, maybe I like Cabernet. So you start to look at varietals. And you also start to look at who produces them. Uh, so you like a particular wine from a particular region by a particular grower. And it's very much the same with teas. So all of these teas are actually Darjeeling. But the difference between this one, which you just sold as Darjeeling, and the others is that I know exactly what they are, where they come from, who grew them. And uh, I started buying my tea in, from India, uh, or my, my Darjeeling's anyway, in, in conjunction with a friend, and uh, it really has opened up uh, my eyes to the um, array of different tastes. So I'm just going to run through what these are to give you an idea of how much further you can go. So you might just say, right, I like a Darjeeling tea, and I do, I like a Darjeeling tea, but it can be so much more. So we start with this Darjeeling. Generic Darjeeling, and I'm going to give it a little taste, and hopefully not swallowing tea leaves. Mm, and it's, it's nice, it's got a, um, a delicate flavour, but still robust. A lot of people describe Darjeeling as the champagne of teas, uh, and, and say it has a muscatel uh, characteristic. I uh, don't think that's as obvious, I think there's a certain almost eucalypt back taste to it. But uh, it is just a very, very nice tea. And as I looked into this and as I look in here, I can actually see that this Darjeeling tea is a bit of a mix. There's some bits that look suspiciously green and some bits that look very dark. It is black tea, but um, it's got a, a bit of this and a bit of that in it. But uh, very nice. Couldn't resist some more. So now we're going to come along to the tea that I'm drinking more of than anything else at the moment. And this is another Darjeeling black. But on this occasion, I know what it is and where it came from. This is from the Gidifar Tea Estate, and it is their musk. And it is, in fact, Second Flush 2010. So a very, very recent tea. And uh, I'm just going to give that a taste. It's wonderful. It's got almost a biscuity, malty uh, taste to it. It's, um, it's more in-depth than the standard Darjeeling. It's not that it's stronger, but there's, there's layer upon layer. So it really is... Um, quite exceptional. So it's a fairly obvious change to go from a basic Darjeeling blend to a single origin Darjeeling that you particularly like. So that's a, and, and look, if that's where your journey ends, go out and buy a Gidifar or a Margaret's Hope um, or any one of the other exceptional uh, tea plantations from Darjeeling and you really will extend your tea experience. 
Right, but I've got a few others here, so let's just have a look at what else we've done here. Now firstly, this one is from the Goonti estate, and this is a yellow. Look at the difference in colour. So hopefully the camera will pick that up. That's that beautiful, mild, tan colour of a true Darjeeling. That's a pale, almost like a white tea, but with a hint of yellow. I'm going to have a taste of that. And it's very, very different. It's almost like... Um, got some characteristics of say the Chinese Pai Mu Tan, uh, but yellow tea is done differently to white, differently to green, differently to black. I'll leave you to look at Wikipedia to find out all the details, but it's a, a very fresh taste, a very, very fresh taste. This is the second flush from this year as well, so maybe that's why it tastes so fresh, but it is a, it's very nice, a great tea to have first thing in the morning, in my view, the, the Goon Tea Yellow. Those damn tea leaves. Right. Over here I've got a green. So this is from the Aria estate, very famous estate. And this is an Aria Second Flush 2009 uh, tea. So last year's green tea. I'll just compare, do some comparisons here. Bulk Darjeeling with the Gidifar Musk and interestingly with the yellow. So the yellow looked quite like a um, a white or a green tea when I when you actually put one next to it you can see the yellow is slightly yellower and this has got a, a definite greenness to it. Now green Indian teas are very different to green Chinese teas in my opinion. They tend to be a little stronger. They tend to um, actually look like a black tea when when you actually have a look and we'll have a look now. They are actually stronger uh, looking. Uh, that's a bit of an uh, illusion, they taste like green tea, but they do look like a black tea. Alright, and we'll just have a, a quick look at the final one here. Now have a look at these leaves, this is very unusual. See how big they are? The other thing that's interesting is even though I've got the same amount of tea in each cup, this one is full because the leaves have expanded so much. And this is a Singabuli Estate White Jade, it's from the second flush of 2010. Um, this is rapidly becoming just one of my favourite teas. It is exceptional. Um, the notes suggest that it is somewhat of a crossover tea between a true white tea and an oolong. Um, when I taste it, I'd have to agree, but it's, it's sweet and it's light and it's absolutely delightful and every time you taste it you get all the flavour um, and I often make a, a big pot of this first thing in the morning and just drink it over the course of uh, three quarters of an hour then straight back out re-steep it and another pot so that's probably a litre of tea um, just sipped away while I work first thing in the morning and uh, it really is uh, absolutely exceptional so have another little sip and get another tea leaf. Okay, so what I've tried to do today is to say that the moving from a tea bag to a loose leaf tea is great, but maybe you should consider that you haven't reached your destination, there's further journeying to be done, and uh, I wish you well with it. And uh, with a further sip of my white jade, I'll see you next time.